I would like to open the bond hearing for the Plymouth Regional Career and Technical Center. And Mr. Haller, I'm going to turn it over to you, please. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you for, for attending, and also those of you on Channel 3, thank you very much for your attention to this very important uh, matter. On the school district warrant for Penny Baker Regional uh, School District, Article 1 will be um, an article asking the voters to approve uh, a total renovation project of uh, $8,547,251. And that will be for the complete renovation of the CTE Center or the Vocational Center, as most of us know it as. Um, there will be no expansion of the building. There will be a new stairwell uh, outside for safety code purposes, but there will be no expansion of the building. And we will not be hiring extra staff. This is strictly a renovation of the existing facility. Uh, the first uh, thing that most people want to know is, uh, you know, when was it built and why are we doing this project? And the facility was built in 1983. We've done some minor um, uh, projects in here, aesthetically mostly, uh, carpets, uh, some, some small lighting projects, uh, and, and, and just a regular maintenance of the facility. But this would be the first opportunity to bring all of our systems up to code um, because right now we, we have some code issues. The fire uh, chief in Plymouth has been uh, very patient with us, but it's time that we address um, the issue. Big picture-wise, um, let me tell you that uh, with the project costing about eight and a half million, our local share of that would be three million one hundred seventy-five thousand nine hundred and ninety-four dollars, about three point two million dollars. The remaining portion of that, uh, over $5 million, would be paid for with federal money that comes to the state of New Hampshire, and you'll hear me call that state aid. Uh, that's a separate program from regular building aid. This is for technical uh, facilities uh, sponsored by the federal government. So we have an opportunity to get 75% of the funding, over $5 million, to offset the majority of this project. Um, if we didn't do this project and we uh, voted down uh, uh, the renovations and the up upgrades, uh, we have deferred maintenance that we have to begin to do, and that deferred maintenance uh, totals about $3.3 million. So the deferred maintenance uh, alone uh, would be more expensive to the district voters than uh, our share of the renovation. And so let me, let me tell you uh, a couple of the, the issues that we have put off over time, uh, merely because we wanted to make sure that we qualified for federal aid. And um, uh, as you walk through our facility, uh, we would have to do a number of renovations in the auto areas. We have to replace um, the car exhaust ventilation systems, uh, floor drains, uh, HVAC would have to be uh, completely updated. Building trades area would have to uh, have ven uh, new ventilation, new air purifiers. All of the bathrooms would have to be brought up to code um, to meet the requirements of ADA and a number of special education requirements that we need to meet. In our culinary area, uh, major renovation would have to take place. Uh, new kitchen hood system, uh, new makeup air system, replacing the heating and cooling systems, and, and the list goes on significantly. And you can find this list on our website. Uh, it would give you an opportunity to really look at um, the issues that we've put off uh, for the moment. But the fire alarm system, all of the doors, plumbing, the sprinkler system, uh, the building lighting, uh, the building clock system, the phone systems, the PA systems. We need to upgrade the building elevator, uh, also uh, camera and door security along with the electrical systems and the building exterior, we would need to bring, um, uh, update all of the windows. So all of those deferred maintenance issues, if we had to do them by ourselves, uh, about almost $2.7 million. And we would be paying uh, a dollar for every dollar spent with local tax money if, um, if we don't uh, vote to approve uh, this, this project on Article 1. Also, we have um, programs and equipment that would need to be updated. Um, uh, 
within both autos and the culinary arts and also a digital media program which would be a new program for us taught by one of the existing teachers. A number of people have asked about well can you take that tram wall down on the uh, south side of the building. Um, we're going to have to take the tram wall down. That in and of itself is about $250,000. So again we have deferred maintenance of $3.3 million that we have to do um, uh, at some point and um, if we vote yes on the project uh, we would spend about 3.1 million so it's really an opportunity for us to maximize um, everything that we can get done in this building that will take us out another 20 years uh, for less money than if we if we try to fix these things by ourselves and we would still have a number of systems that were built for 1983 so again, this is Article 1 uh, on the uh, Heavy Baker uh, ballot. Um, we're going to have an opportunity to have our principal, Bruce Parsons, walk through uh, the changes in the building. We'll go slowly so you can actually see um, uh, the renovation. These are just the raw numbers. And when Mr. Parsons is done, we'll have an opportunity for our business administrator, Dan Ronster, to walk you through uh, the repayment process and we plan to repay this project out over 10 years to minimize the number of, uh, of uh, payments in, in a tax rate. So we'll do it out over 10 years. The facility is being built and renovated for um, a 20-year period. So the life of the loan really is about 50% of the uh, expected life expectancy of, of the um, up, up, upgrades. So Mr. Parsons, would you like to join us? Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's a pleasure to be here tonight and to walk you through uh, what we hope will be a successful uh, project coming your way in March. Um, and I also want to reinforce what Mr. Halloran said. Um, all of these uh, you know, programs that we are preparing for you tonight and the information regarding financial and the plans are all on our webpage. And I encourage people to go to that site and if they need further information or any questions, please don't hesitate to call my office for that information. So if I may, let me walk you through. Presently, we have uh, five career tech programs at this high school. Automotives, culinary arts, marketing education, health occupation, and drafting technology. As Mark took you through the original vocational center was built in 1983. Since that time, no major renovations have taken place. The newest program that we added was our health occupation program, and that was completed in 2003 with local funding and a grant from Spear Memorial Hospital. Within the state of New Hampshire, there are 18 regional career centers throughout the entire state. Out of these 18 centers, there are two districts remaining that have not completed their renovations and taken advantage of the available federal funding money that Mr. Allen has talked about. Let's talk about automotives. Our automotives program at the high school again originated in 1983 and there have been no changes to that automotive lab, the floor space, or the classroom. Our present autos has a current enrollment of approximately 60 students. That's large for a program of that size. Autos is nationally certified by NATEP, which means the National Automotive Education Foundation, and the agency has a strict set of guidelines that we must follow for the high school automotive program to continue. Currently down in autos, we have just three lifts in the lab. And the classroom space is separate from the lab. It is unable to provide the supervision in both the shop in the classroom at the same time. The present auto shop that we know that we have right now is approximately 2,920 square feet and the classroom is about 500. The proposed renovations for the new program would have six lifts in the lab and one in the classroom. The most important feature of this would be the classroom would be connected directly right into the lab that would provide the supervision for both the lab and the classroom. The proposed square footage that we are asking for is 3,615 and that would include the lab and the shop. 
and 1,420 square foot for the adjoining classroom in that particular program. Students will no longer be limited by the space. There will be more workstations for students for continuous hands-on training and learning, and it gives them a lot more opportunities to be engaged in the automotive diagnosis, the repair, and troubleshooting that the full 90 minutes of class instruction time provides. Marketing on our second floor. The biggest aspect in the marketing renovations area involve the consolidation of three rooms into two rooms. Our marketing program right now is our largest program in the vocational area in regards with both students and space. The marketing lab in the classroom would be combined to increase the space for enrollments, which are currently now at 79 students. In addition, as Mr. Howard said, the renovations would address the infrastructure needs of heating, cooling, ventilation, electrical, and the technology needs needed to run that program. Our health occupation program, which is in the main part of this building, the main change of, that we propose for this program is the addition of a handicapped accessible bathroom slash shower that provides for our LNA students to practice their personal care skills as outlined in the health art curriculum. Drafting. Drafting is we propose to move to our third floor and this has been an extremely successful program. Uh, this program has been in place since the last renovation of the main building and have recently doubled in their enrollments that required the addition of a teacher to meet the demands of this flourishing program. <coughs> the current classroom location is adjacent right now is adjacent to our industrial arts classroom, which produces both noise and dust, which interferes with the teaching environment and the technology needed in that drafting program. The current classroom space that they're using in drafting right now is approximately 916 square feet. The proposed renovation would create a space that allows for both teachers of the program to work in the same space in a location away from industrial arts in more than triple the classroom foot square footage to 2,775 square feet to accommodate the growing enrollments in this program. Culinary Arts, located on the main floor. Again, besides cosmetics changes, this program has not been renovated since the last renovation and is maxed out for enrollment. The proposed renovation would recognize the entire square footage with the dining room flowing into the kitchen and then the classroom, which would be separated by glass to enable our students and instructors to work in both areas and maintain the important supervision. It would also include a small office, lockers, and bathrooms that were needed for the program. The proposed square footage is 1,066 in the classroom and almost 2,000 square feet in the kitchen lab. This plan would allow for increased enrollments to this maxed out program and also provide more hands-on instruction and flexibility of instruction between the classroom and the kitchen. As Mr. Haller talked about our newest program, this, we've had a video editing program for approximately five years, and the numbers in that program has tripled in size. To increase the interest requires not only an increase in size of the physical space, but an expansion of the media arts curriculum. To fully meet the needs of this program, it is necessary to add a digital media classroom, which will include a recording studio. The recording studio will include the state-of-the-art video and audio technology. And I want to repeat what Mr. Helen has said, there are no additional staff that will be required to run these programs. In conclusion, all of these proposed renovations will be accomplished within the square footage of our present CTE center. The building will remain the same. And I really encourage the voters, please call me at any time and I would love to take you on a tour and actually take you through the actual uh, uh, draft and see the location of what we're talking about. Thank you very much. Uh, our business administrator, Dan Rosner, uh, will go over the financing of the project. Remember, this is a, a project, a um, little bit more than $8 million, of which um, over $5 million will be coming to the district in, in terms of state aid. And then the remainder of that number will be uh, we are proposing 
would be paid out over a 10 year period of time. So, Dan? Thank you. We're proposing, if the project is approved, that the net amount to be financed after the federal grant monies will be $3.175 million. Our proposal is to finance this over 10 years with a municipal bond, uh, which would bring a cost an estimated 2.5% interest rate. We've proposed the 10-year plan to minimize the impact on the local tax rate in each of the member towns of the Pemby Baker District. And as I go through some brief numbers, I'd like just like to point out that the numbers for the first year of the financing, which I'll depict, would be the peak, and they would actually go down over the 10-year life of the financing facility. So during that first year, the annual assessment to pay the bond would be approximately $396,000 and that ranges uh, to affect the tax rate between 13 cents per thousand and 21 cents per thousand depending on which member town we're talking about. But once again, that's how it would peak out just through the first year and those pennies per thousand would gradually decrease over the 10-year financing of the project, which as Mr. Halloran said, uh, is a 10-year financing for improvements that will last at least 20 years. And uh, this type of opportunity for financing the net portion after the, after the federal Money's come through. is really a unique opportunity we want to capitalize on. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you very much for your attention tonight. Uh, we appreciate you taking the time to learn about uh, this very important project. Again, this will be Article One on the Pemmy Baker School ballot. Uh, you may hear out in the community that there is no state building aid currently. That is true. Regular programs, um, uh, expansion and development of uh, programs in local schools, there currently is no state building aid. This is completely different. This is federal money supporting uh, career technical uh, education, the vocational programs, which is a separate appropriation that comes through Congress and is sent on to the states. Uh, as Mr. Parsons said, Plymouth Regional High School uh, it, it turn is up within the state of New Hampshire, and uh, we're hoping that we're able to take this opportunity to, to get that 75% um, uh, federal state aid. As you, uh, some of you may remember in about four of our districts within SAU 48, uh, six or seven years <coughs> ago, um, there was an announcement that the building aid program uh, within the state of New Hampshire was going to be uh, frozen and come to an end. Uh, a number of our communities took advantage of that last call on building aid and did some uh, significant renovating to their facilities. Uh, we're happy to report that uh, all of those buildings are functioning very well and also all of those bonds uh, will be paid off uh, prior to us uh, financing this bond. So we're looking at the majority of our districts, in fact close to all of our districts, with no, uh, no debt uh, involved either at the elementary or the high school level. So this would be this would be the bond that we would be paying off uh, over 10 years. So I think it's a terrific opportunity. And again, to reiterate and not to uh, seem like I'm extorting anybody, um, we're going to have to do about $3.3 million worth of, of um, just code upgrades over the next 10 years uh, financed completely by ourselves uh, if we don't uh, take advantage of this opportunity. So um, I urge you to um, take Mr. Parsons up on his offer uh, to visit uh, uh, our Career Technical Institute, Plymouth Regional High School, take a tour of the affected areas, uh, and, and you can get a real feel for um, what we have here. They're terrific programs. Uh, we're just really cramped for space, and we really uh, also uh, need to bring a number of our systems up to, to code for um, for the year 2017. So again, thank you very much on behalf of the Plymouth Regional School Board. Thank you for your attention to this. And uh, we will be out in the uh, member communities over the course of uh, February and early March. And I, and I uh, invite you to come to any of our meetings and to, uh, to ask questions and, and learn more about the project. Thank you. If there are no questions from anyone, I would like to remind people that we do have our deliberative session for the budget on February 7th, Tuesday, February 7th, at 6.30 in, in the uh, cafeteria. So I do urge people to attend that. And I would like to 
thank everyone for coming.